This is the video for Chapter 8, Section 4, Movement of Tectonic Plates. I'm Mrs. Erling, and also in the video today are Mrs. Kim and Mr. Knox. You should have your textbook open to pages 283 to 285, and feel free to pause the video at any point or rewind it so you can hear something again. Earth has plates, specifically tectonic plates, which make up Earth's outer crust or outer layer. Uh, you can see on the red lines in the map below where the edges of the tectonic plates are. These edges are called plate boundaries. Plate boundaries do not always line up with the edges of continents. So we can see here this plate boundary is nowhere near a continent. It is in the middle of the ocean. Um, earthquakes and volcanoes occur on the boundaries to these plates. So you can see California is on a plate boundary here, which is why we have so many earthquakes. And this loop here is called the Ring of Fire because uh, so many earthquakes and volcanoes are located on it. According to the theory of plate tectonics, Earth's landmass have changed slowly over time because they are part of plates that are slowly moving. And it's not so fast that you can actually feel the plates moving. It's very, very slow, approximately five centimeters per year. And due to this, uh, the con continents and the land's plates are constantly changing. So who knows, maybe in a few billion years, you might be able to drive to China and have some authentic Chinese food. Who knows? Now, um, with, with continental drift, the theory of continental drift is that the continents have been slowly drifting apart for millions of years. If you look here, 225 million years ago, this was a long time ago, a, a time of dinosaurs, uh, uh, there was uh, one supercontinent called Pangaea. And as you can imagine, these animals were able to roam back and forth and um, um, migrate uh, wherever they wanted to. Then um, as time passed 200 million years ago, uh, it broke up into two large land masses, uh, Laurasia and Gondwana land. And then as time moved on, these land masses um, started to separate. And until you get to present day, you have the uh, er world as it looks today. Now, if you go to uh, phschool.com and uh, uh, type in this code, CFP1015, you'll see uh, more information about uh, cont continental drift. Now, as you can imagine, these uh, the continents, as they moved, it caused a, a tremendous effect on the environment as well as animals that lived there. Um, if you can imagine, today, here's where North America is, but if we go back in time, North America, North America, North America, and North America, North America was in a slightly different place. It looked like it was more toward the equator. And as you guys know, at the equator, it's pretty hot. And uh, as uh, North America moved northward, the uh, environment, you can imagine the environment got a little cooler. Also, if you look here at Australia, Australia has been separated, so those animals had uh, a different path for uh, evolution. And this is the reason why this is the reason why you see lots of different marsup well marsupials or animals with pouches in Australia. You don't find them uh, in, in in any other continent. So there is uh, a great effects because of this continental drift, and it's continuing today. Except, you know, the only thing is, is at an extremely, extremely slow rate, about one to two inches per year. All right, thank you for watching. Okay. Oops. Now we go here.